everything that we see and feel around us is usually termed as matter. By now, we even know that matter is classified into three major states. And what are these three states of matter? That's right, they are solid, liquid and gas. But have you ever thought about what the matter around us could be made up of? Well, this question is not new and has been addressed a long time ago. And many people have made an attempt to answer it. Let us have a look at a few of these philosophies and theories. Recorded evidences suggest that around 500 BC, an Indian philosopher named Maharishi Kanad hypothesized a concept. His curiosity about components of matter made him put forth an idea. He suggested that when we divide matter into tinier particles, ultimately we reach a stage when the matter cannot be divided further. These particles which cannot be divided further make up the matter. The matter was called Padharth in the Indian language and he named the particles as Parmanu. On similar lines, another Indian philosopher named Pakhuda Kathyayama made slight modification in Maharishi Kanad's work and elaborated saying that such indivisible particles come in different combinations to make up different kinds of matter. Around the same era, two Greek philosophers also suggested the same concept. The two personalities were Democritus and Leucippus. They also postulated that if we divide matter continuously, then we reach a stage where it cannot be divided further. These indivisible particles thus make up the complete matter. Democritus named these particles as atomists, meaning indivisible. Now you may say that this concept is known to us. Yes, I agree. But we are familiar with this concept now. In the era when people were not really aware of anything in science, such concepts proved useful in laying the foundations for modern inventions. Around the end of the 18th century, a few scientists could prove these suggestions correct. They not only discovered, researched about atoms, but also threw light on the basic difference between elements and compounds. Yes, studying this difference paved the way for many scientists to understand how several combinations can lead to the formation of different substances. But now when I say combinations, it means we will have chemical reactions, right? That's correct. And chemical reactions are governed by a few important laws. This fact was understood and accepted widely when foundations of chemical sciences were laid by the French nobleman and chemist Antoine Lavoisier. The two most important laws of chemical combination were established by then. They were popularly known as the law of conservation of mass and the law of constant proportions. Let us take a look at both these laws in the upcoming videos.